We all have that one medicine we turn to when we feel a headache coming on, when a fever hits, or when muscle pains won't go away. One of the most trusted and familiar pills in medicine cabinets around the world is aspirin. But have you ever wondered who actually invented aspirin? Was it the product of a lone genius working in a lab? Or was it something that evolved over time, passed down from ancient knowledge? Today, we're diving into the history of one of the world's oldest and most widely used drugs, aspirin, and uncovering the truth about who really invented it, right here on History of Simple Things. Long before aspirin became a little white tablet in a bottle, its roots, quite literally, came from nature. Ancient civilizations knew that the bark and leaves of the willow tree could help relieve pain and reduce fever. This knowledge dates back as far as 400 BCE, when Hippocrates, the Greek physician often referred to as the father of medicine, recommended chewing willow bark to ease pain during childbirth. Similar remedies were also used in ancient Egypt, China, and among Native American tribes. What these early healers didn't know was that the willow tree contains a chemical compound called salicin, which the body transforms into salicylic acid, a substance with strong anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving effects. As time progressed, Natural remedies continued to be passed down through generations. However, the exact chemical workings of these natural compounds remained a mystery until the rise of modern chemistry in the 19th century. That's when scientists began isolating the active ingredients from medicinal plants and creating more stable, potent versions in laboratories. Salicylic acid, the compound that gave willow bark its healing powers, was eventually extracted and used to make medicines. But while it worked, it also had harsh side effects. It irritated the stomach lining, causing nausea, ulcers, and even internal bleeding in some patients. The turning point came in the 1890s in Germany, where a young chemist named Felix Hoffmann was working for the Bayer Company a small but growing pharmaceutical firm at the time. According to the widely accepted version of events, Hoffman was searching for a way to help his father, who suffered from severe arthritis and couldn't tolerate the stomach problems caused by salicylic acid. Using his chemical expertise, Hoffman modified the structure of salicylic acid by adding an acetyl group, creating acetyl salicylic acid. This new compound retained the pain-relieving and anti-inflammatory benefits, but was much gentler on the stomach. He tested it successfully, and Bayer soon recognized the commercial potential of this new, milder drug. The company gave it the name aspirin, a combination of A for the acetyl group, spear from Spiria ulmeria, and the common suffix in used in chemical naming. Bayer patented aspirin in 1899 and launched it as a powder, then later in tablet form. It quickly became one of the most popular medications worldwide and remains so to this day. In many ways, Felix Hoffman was credited as the inventor of aspirin. His work made the drug usable and commercially viable helping it to become one of the first blockbuster pharmaceuticals in history. Here's where the story gets a bit murky. In the 1940s and 50s, new documents began to surface, suggesting that Hoffman may not have been the original inventor after all. A chemist named Arthur Eichengrun, also working at Bayer, claimed that he was the one who directed Hoffman to synthesize acetyl salicylic acid and that he designed the project and oversaw its development. According to Eichengrun, he had identified acetyl salicylic acid as a potentially safer alternative and instructed Hoffman, his subordinate, 
to carry out the lab work. However, due to the political climate in Germany during the 1930s and 40s, particularly the rise of Nazi anti-Semitism, Eichengrün, who was Jewish, was removed from historical records and denied credit. In 1949, Felix Eichengrun claimed he led the development of aspirin, but his story was long dismissed. In 1999, historian Walter Sneeder found strong evidence supporting Eichengrun's claim, suggesting he may have been the true inventor. Still, Bayer and many historians credit Hoffman, though they now recognize Eichengrun's likely major role. The debate remains unresolved. Regardless of who deserves the credit, what's undeniable is the impact aspirin has had on global health. Initially used for pain and fever, it became a standard household remedy in the early 20th century. During the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, aspirin was one of the few drugs available, although overdosing and lack of dosage knowledge caused some unintended harm. Later on, Doctors discovered that aspirin had blood-thinning properties, which made it useful in preventing heart attacks and strokes. In the 1980s and 90s, studies confirmed that low-dose aspirin could significantly reduce the risk of heart disease in certain patients, leading to its widespread use in cardiovascular prevention. Researchers even explored its possible role in cancer prevention and cognitive health. Today, aspirin is considered a versatile and essential medicine. It's on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, and billions of tablets are consumed annually worldwide. It continues to be one of the most studied drugs in medical history. Despite newer, more targeted medications being available, aspirin's affordability, accessibility, and broad range of uses keep it relevant even in the 21st century. So, who really invented aspirin? Was it Felix Hoffman, the chemist who synthesized acetyl salicylic acid and made it into a usable medicine? Or was it Arthur Eichengrun, the man who may have led the project and envisioned its potential? Or does credit go even further back to ancient civilizations that first used willow bark for healing? In truth, the story of aspirin is not about a single inventor, it's about a long journey through centuries of observation, chemistry, trial and error, and medical discovery. It's a perfect example of how science builds upon both tradition and innovation, and how even a small white pill can carry a rich, complicated, and inspiring history. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.